All right. Thank you, everyone, for uh, taking time out of your afternoon to share uh, some time with us as we present our uh, findings of our third annual Here She Comes 2012, Insight into Women, Radio, and New Media. This is the uh, final webinar in a series of four. I'm Jeff Johnson, and you'll hear from Alan in a couple minutes. Uh, first of all, a couple uh, housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, first thing is we try to save as much time as possible for questions and comments at the end. So please uh, feel free to uh, send us questions uh, via the dialog box on your control panel. You can also follow us at hashtag Burns Study on Twitter, and we'll be monitoring that throughout the uh, afternoon. Uh, as well, there's going to be a lot of information that we're going to present here in the next 45 minutes. So we will make this slide deck available uh, on our website, burnsradio.com, and those slides will be available starting tomorrow morning. That's Friday morning. And you may want to minimize your control panel because we do have lots of charts and information here. We want to make sure you maximize your screen so you can see uh, all the all the information in, in living color here. Uh, the purpose of our study, really twofold. We uh, do it to develop proprietary information for our clients. But we also, and maybe more importantly, we do it to develop information for the benefit of the industry. What we study overall, we look at radio usage, attitudes toward the medium, radio's digital efforts and, and competition, custom music streamers, who are they, Arbitron responders, and the music tastes in, in uh, overall and in a particular format that we're going to look at today. And my cursor stopped working, so hang on one second here. And there we go, radio's heaviest uh, listeners as well. And finally, that age-old question, what do women want? I don't know that we have uh, all the answers, but uh, I think we do have some insights that can be useful in terms of uh, how it applies to your radio station. Overall, we looked at a ton of data. We looked at data points over 3,000. Uh, demos 300, so that's a, a million pieces of discrete information. Way too much to present in one webinar, so we divided it into four. Uh, we started off with industry headlines. Then we took a look at the uh, digital uh, battleground. Last week we took a deep dive into top 40, and today we're going to look at AC, hot AC, and adult top 40 arena. These webinars aren't possible without our friends at Triton Digital. They presented these webinars all along and good friends of our company. We have Jim Kerr on the line with us. He's VP of Stra uh, Business Strategy with Triton. Uh, good afternoon, Jim. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks, Jeff and Alan. And just want to say how you know happy and proud we are to uh, you know assist and help in any way to present uh, these uh, webinars that you're doing. Uh, we just want to do whatever we can to help our friends in radio and working with you guys as a part of them. Great. Thanks, Jim. And we're also going to be working with Triton uh, later this fall. We're going to do another huge study, uh, and we're going to be using their polling engine, uh, which they offer to client radio stations to allow uh, stations to do their own research. And uh, look forward to our research project with Triton that we're going to present the results at the NAB uh, this fall. So. Today, what are we going to look at? Well, first of all, we're going to look at the, the hot AC, AC, and adult top 40 arena. Who is she? What, what are her media usage patterns? What does she do in the mornings? How about in-car listening? That all-important listen at work. Music tastes. Leading images for PPM winners in the formats. And then lastly, we're going to take a look at these heavy listeners and the impact they have and the differences they have uh, with everyone else. 
So with that, uh, I'm going to hand it off to Alan. And uh, Alan, why don't you talk a little bit about the uh, sample of the of the survey? Okay, thanks, Jeff. Um, for three years in a row now, we've kept our sample frame identical so that we can trend the information. And each year, it's been a little bit over 2,000 women aged 15 to 54 who cum either or both AC and top 40 stations. And the ages within those are, are proportionate to the combined cums of the two audiences. This year, the interviews were done online via SSI's national panel, and they were conducted in May. Uh, out of the two, uh, I think 2010 women we talked to, 1,600 cumed AC, hot or main, and 1,471 cumed top 40, either rhythmic or mainstream top 40. We divide the country into five regions to control the uh, geographic dispersal of the sample and make sure that no one region overtakes it. And this year, we hit it absolutely on the nose at 20.0 per region. I wanted to define or at least bring up, call your attention to some groups we'll talk about today. One is women ages 25 to 54, regardless of whether they listen to AC or not. Now, there won't be many of those references. Then women who do QMAC, who are 25 to 54, will look at points um, at QMs or P1s of mainstream top 40 for comparison and hot AC and mainstream AC, because the, those three formats are really just continuing points on a spectrum. When we, when we refer on one of these slides to AC, um, we mean both hot and mainstream, so not differentiating there. But we will at times say hot AC or mainstream AC. And in a, one or two places, we'll refer to adult top 40, which is statistically here just a merge of the P1s of mainstream top 40 and the P1s of hot AC. And we'll get the why in just a minute. Heavy radio users will be one of the last things we look at, and there's some important information there. And we'll also look at working moms and, and why they're important and what they do and don't do. So first of all, who is she? What can we learn about her as a person? Well, as a radio listener, here are the average ages of the QMs and P1s of mainstream top 40, hot AC, and mainstream AC. The dotted line across the middle is the age average of the total sample, which was 32. And you see that uh, P1s for mainstream top 40 are logically younger than average. P1s of hot AC a little bit older than average, and mainstream AC is the oldest of all. And I thought it was interesting when we saw this that the age gap between the P1s of mainstream top 40 and hot AC was bigger than the gap between hot AC and mainstream AC. Hot AC to mainstream is five years. Hot AC to top 40 is nine years. So in, so first, first thing that, that starts to kick into gear is, hmm, is, is there room for something else or any, any other kind of execution between mainstream top 40? and hot AC, and we'll look at that when we come around to the music section of this. Is she married or single or divorced? Uh, on the left side, there it is by format. And by the way, we'll see differences both by format today and other places where there's no real difference by format but clear age trends. And it's there, there are times when it looks like you really need to pay more attention to the listener than to the format. I've, I've said that pretty often. Um, here we go. So is she uh, is she single? Uh, on the left, the blue bars are singleness. 51% of mainstream top 40 P1s are single, and you see that decline to hot AC and decline further with mainstream AC. On the right side, you see those bars decline with age. Uh, on the right side, uh, well, back to the left side, you also see the red bars, which is married or living with a partner, go up. Uh, but they don't go up by age here. 25 to 34 is a little behind 35 to 44. In fact, let's 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 identify 35 to 44 for a minute as the peak mom demo. Just a second. They have they they have the most the highest percentage of marriage. Um, you notice, by the way, in 45 to 54. That's the lowest percentage of marriage of these three 10-year demos because they're also the highest in terms of divorce. And that kind of makes sense because they've been alive longer, therefore they've had more time to get tired of whoever they were 
getting tired of. Employment status, um, around 40 to 45 percent of AC listeners are employed and there's no real significant difference there by age. Each year we've asked her, ask what does she want most? And this is a forced choice. We give her the choice of uh, if you could pick one of these four things, would you take more money, more time, a better relationship, or more sex? The answer is definitely not more sex, and you know you can go ahead and groan at that if you would. Most most of the people I think here are, are guys. Um, more money is the big answer, and for whatever reason, it uh, oh, there uh, there's a reason it, it it increases a little bit with age, and that's because if you look on the right side, uh, relationship is not the dominant answer, but it is a bigger answer with 25 to 34 s than older women. So after a while, relationship matters less. Uh, they've either got a good one or they don't want to talk about it, uh, and money becomes uh, the only issue, kind of. How many of these women have children list, uh, living at home? 50% uh, or more of ACP1s do. And once again, as with that previous slide, we see that 35 to 44 is the peak demo for having children at home. 25 to 34 is not all of them have had time to have kids yet, and 45 to 54 is have had, uh, many of them have had their kids move out now. How many children at home? Well, the answer continues to be right around two persons, two, two kids living at home with you, and it doesn't really vary much by, by anything, format or age or any other factor. We ask, in trying to understand women, which as Jeff pointed out, could be impossible. Uh, we ask her to agree or disagree with the statement, uh, I'm pretty satisfied with who I am. And we expected agreement generally with that statement, but what we were looking for is, is it strong agreement or, or weak agreement? And what we see here is it's weak agreement. 54% of all women 25, 54 who QMAC uh, said they somewhat agree that they are satisfied with who they are. Um, so that you know, that that tells you that she sees room in her life for self improvement or improvement in her job or her relationship or her circumstances or the amount of fun she has and if you find ways to help her with that improvement she's going to definitely be very fond of you what does she own in terms of digital devices from the bottom up um, start off with tablet computers that are not iPads, followed by iPads. An internet radio, almost one out of five women have one of those now. A cell phone that can receive AM, FM radio doesn't necessarily mean that 25% of the women own a phone with an activated radio chip. It means that 25% of the women either, uh, it means 25% of them own a smartphone that either has an activated chip or they just know that they can listen to radio via their browser. Oops, wrong direction. Uh, so totaling up iPads and tablet computers, uh, three out of ten women have one now. That seems like a lot of growth in a hurry. TiVos, DVRs, very popular. There's iPod, which you don't see much growth in. We're not showing a growth rate here, but there really hasn't been much growth in the ownership of iPods. And uh, uh, as, as Jeff commented last week, uh, it wasn't very long ago, it just uh, seems like a couple of years ago, that people were worried that iPods were going to kill radio. And of course, that hasn't happened. Smartphones. Nielsen, back in March, uh, released a survey that, that showed that about 52% of all adults in America owned a smartphone. Here we see it's 54 that's within the margin of error, and it could also be that you know, maybe a couple of points of women have iPhones that men don't have. We'll see. And laptop computers actually surprised me in the, at the pervasiveness of laptop computers here. So that's, uh, that's her digital arsenal. When we look at uh, how she feels about air personalities, around 45, 46 uh, percent in all these formats say they generally like them. And that that follows what we see on the whole. Uh, generally, around half of the audience, maybe a little bit less of the audience, and by the I mean almost any audience, uh, for music radio stations, 
feels like air personalities enhance the experience of listening. The remaining listeners are divided between people who actively don't like them, and that's a minority, and women who say they can just take or leave them. And you may have heard us say this before, but if you understand that, that split, a, a half or a little bit less say, I like them, and therefore they may be prepared to give the jock a chance when he or she cracks the mic. Uh, they'll they they like air personalities. They might be willing to see you know sit there for a, uh, a few seconds and see what's going to happen. The other half or more either don't like them or like them cont contingently, conditioned on what the person's saying right then. So that's why you see in PPM um, you you see people start going away as soon as the mic is cracked because some people some people a won't sit around at all. Other people will will not give you much of a chance, so you better get to the point and be entertaining immediately. One of the other things that we, the attitude or, or self-evaluation questions, statements that we uh, offer to these women is this, I tend to try new things before most of my friends. And here you see a slope for both formats and uh, age groups, because the older the person, the less likely she's going to be to experiment. Moving into her media usage and focusing uh, on a combination of radio and digital, music, uh, digital media, here are the percentages. This is the percent of 25 to 54 AC cumers who do each of these things daily. And there's the radio stuff highlighted. And if you if you look at this, you look at the top two. There's there there's almost three levels here. Uh, the top two things are in the 80 percent, that's television and websites in general. The next two are 70 to 62 percent, that's radio on a radio and Facebook. And then below that is the third level of, of everything drops way down to 20 percent or less. And really if you, uh, if you add the daily cum of radio's online streams to radio's over the air stream, there's a lot of duplication, but it would kick the uh, the radio daily cum up well over the 70s. So it might al almost be in a category by itself. Looking at this, you see that um, right now among these women, uh, there's actually a little bit more listening of, well, I should say, a few more people listening to AM, FM, radio online than are listening to custom streams from Pandora, et, et cetera. Uh, radio station websites are getting about as much traction as Twitter, and we were a little surprised. To see, we all know Pinterest has grown and grown rapidly, but here it's almost got the kind of daily usage that uh, that Twitter does. We don't see any major differences by format in these numbers, but we do see some differences by age. And this is the first slide that we'll use indexes. So I want to quick word of explanation about that. An index is just a really quick, simple way of comparing two sets of people or two sets of numbers to each other. And uh, starting with the bar on the left-hand side, what that bar means is that 25 to 34's um, daily cum to radio or television, in other words, old-fashioned broadcasting, is only 93% of the 25 to 54 average. When you move to 35-44, it's 4% greater than the average, and 45-54 to 54 is right at the average. So those aren't really big numbers. Those aren't, sorry, really big differences. There's a little bit of a drop of 25 to 34, but uh, in all cases, they're within seven points of the, of the overall average. That's with broadcasting. When you move to the right side of the screen, we averaged Facebook, Pinterest, radio station, online listening, custom streams, using internet in the car, all of the, you know, not all, but many of the digital things, you see a pretty dramatic slope from 25 to 34 down to 45, 54. This was much bigger than I expected to see because we all know that the usage of, of internet and digital um, has has grown above 35 and above and above 45. But uh, this, there's still a giant, giant difference right now. So moving into her morning, we're going to kind of follow the day from her morning 
to in the car to at work. So we'll start with her morning. And what time she wakes up, exactly when does that morning start? Well, the average for all ACQ adult women is 6.45 in the morning. But employed people are more important because they tend to listen to radio more. They wake up at an average of 6.22. But employed people who are also mothers have to get up even earlier, so they get up at 6.15. Now, what is the average, uh, the median is, is what divides behavior into halves. And the average and the median are usually very, very close. So what this means, a, a way to think of this is that half of all working moms are already up and at it by 6.15. So the question is, is your morning show awake and at it well before that time? So we know what time she wakes up. Here's how she wakes up. A tiny number have uh, TVs with alarms on them or, or use TVs with alarms on them. A few people have somebody else call them, boyfriend, husband who's already at work, whatever. Uh, there's a couple of other ways in here that we didn't list. Someone in your home waking you up. And now we get to clock radio. About one out of eight people still wake up to clock radio. Used to be pretty much number one or number two years ago. Somehow, a quarter of these women are able to wake up on their own. I wish I had that skill. Um, now, here's the, here's the newcomer recently, an alarm on your cell phone. And number one still is alarm clock. But look at the ratio between alarm on your cell and, and a clock radio. Uh, cell phone alarms are a little bit better than two to one there. When we look at it by age, you see some clear differences. Uh, with 25 to 34, cell phone alarms dominate waking up to a, uh, a radio. Uh, 35 to 44, still alarms dominate, not quite so hugely. And when you get to 45 to 54, it's about even between alarm on your cell and clock radio. And we've said before that I think every single radio station cell phone app that we have ever seen has an alarm function on it. But I've never heard a morning show talk about that. Now, there are TV stations that are all over that. Be sure to set your alarm app tomorrow morning to wake up to TV5 for the news and weather and information you need to start your day. Um, we need to get our morning shows to do that. Well, now she's awake. What's the first thing? Now, this isn't, this isn't exactly the same question as what's what do you want most in morning radio? This is what you want to see, hear, or read. In other words, radio or anywhere when you first wake up. Well, we continue to see that as a concept, Hollywood or celebrity gossip doesn't rate very well. Uh, possibly it's a guilty pleasure that women don't like to admit to because gossip is ultimately not nice. Wrong direction. There we go. Local traffic reports, not when she first wakes up. Daily reminders of what you have to do. Softer music, not real big in the morning. People having fun, news, interesting conversation. Now we get to the top four and the one new thing that we threw into the mix this year, the statement uh, or the, op the option to select something motivational or inspirational. And of course, we didn't, we didn't go on to define that. It means whatever it meant to the individual respondent. And over a quarter of women say that that's something they would want most when they first wake up. I think that's significant. Weather is important, something funny, and number one is upbeat music. There's a little bit of an age, uh, sorry, a format slope for the uh, desire for something motivational or inspirational first thing in the morning. Uh, and it's mainstream ACs. I mean, it's 20% or better for everybody, but mainstream AC folks are a little bit more attracted to that than everybody else. So that makes us think, you know, motivate me can be taken a couple of ways. We know that people use morning radio for motivation when it's an upbeat morning show and, and upbeat music. We, we see that in verbatims all the time. There's another way to take that, but that could be literal, verbally inspiring or motivating someone. And, it, and, and just based on the musical differences between these formats, it looks like that's probably what the mainstream AC people are asking for. Now, we noticed that traffic's 
score as the first thing you want to listen to was pretty low. And as I pointed out, first thing means as soon as you wake up. So it probably becomes of more importance at about the time uh, she leaves for work. So that time is 21% are gone by 645. The majority leave between 645 and 8. And then smaller numbers for 815 to 845, and then 9 o'clock or later. So the, the big rush is 645 to 8 AM. Now, it's not necessarily when the most cars are on the road, but that's when the most trips begin. The average for all employed women is 745. Looking at upbeat versus softer music in the morning, here's another format difference. Uh, softer wins one place, and that's, of course, in mainstream AC. Upbeat music dominates both hot AC and mainstream AC. What does she do before she leaves home? I'll tell you this. These women are very, very busy, and we'll see how compressed their time is in a minute. But we gave them a list of items and, and asked uh, them to check off uh, any and all items that, that she did typically before leaving home in the morning, whether for work or school or whatever. Number one is pretty logical, make your breakfast. Number two is check email, still a big one. Turn on a television, take care of pets. You might want to show this slide to your morning guys, by the way, your morning folks, excuse me. Go online, do one or more household chores, make breakfast for other people in the house, wake the kids, check your Facebook, turn on a radio. So there's radio right there at 24%. Only a quarter of these women are turning on a radio before leaving home. We can do better than that. We have to give them more compelling content. The rest of them are dress the kids, decide what to have for dinner. I don't leave home. Uh, wake up the spouse, send a text, none of these things. Apparently, 3% of our sample lived in a convent and don't do any of these things in the morning. And 2% dress a spouse. So one of the things here uh, to take from this is that if you want to reach your audience in the morning in some channel other than with your radio station or in addition to your radio station, for example, to have your morning show very early in the morning say to them, hey, here's what we're doing this morning. You don't want to miss it, and here's what time it's happening. Well, if you've got a good, good email database, uh, email beats texting about four to one. If you don't have a great email database, then go to Facebook. Facebook beats texting two to one. Not to, not to say or suggest, by the way, that texting isn't a decent way to reach um, a, a fair number of women in the morning, but it really shouldn't be the only way to do it. There are actually two different morning experiences out there, and they belong to women with children and women without children. Here's a quick index uh, of, of what mo working moms more likely have to do. They're three times more likely they have to make breakfast for somebody else, 66% uh, more likely to, to work on what are we going to have for dinner tonight, do household chores, a little more likely to turn on a television, and more likely to take care of pets, probably the kids' pets. And the turning on a TV thing, by the way, uh, we know from last year we asked people what they did, what media or medium they used first in the morning. And for women who said television, we asked why. The dominant answers were for information or to distract the kids. So I was thinking about this earlier today. You know, there are there are tones that are audible only to young young people. Maybe we could. I have no idea if you could modulate those tones, but wouldn't it be fun to have a radio station that could broadcast something only young people could hear? Here's a slide for sales. It's pretty much the same list you just saw. It's uh, focused on heavy radio listeners. And here are highlights of items that can have a direct sales connection. Making breakfast, food, take care of pets, obviously pet supply, pet care, do chores, household supplies, make breakfast for others, food again, dress kids, clothing, decide what to have for dinner, food again. You might want to show this to your sales department. How much time does she give herself to do all of that? The answer is not a whole lot. A quarter of them, 30 minutes or less, a quarter of employed women. And that 
I'd, I'd like to watch that happen sometime because it's not going on in my house. 60 minutes or less, 41%. An hour 15 or less is what the majority give themselves, and that also turns out to be the average. So she's got a lot to do, and she doesn't give herself much time to do it in. So your morning show, if it wants to get these women before they leave home, has got to fit into a very busy, time-compressed schedule. Ultimately, how much morning radio usage are is there? Uh, we ask about usage between 5.30 and 9 a.m. 22% none at all. 45 minutes or less was the answer for about half the sample. And 30% said an hour or more. So 45 minutes or less was the dominant answer. But based on some calculations we ran here, over 70% of all morning quarter hours come from women who listen an hour or more in the morning. Uh, that obviously doesn't mean that she is sitting there devotedly paying attention to everything you say at the kitchen table for an hour. The, you know, the, the most common start time for jobs in America, at least office jobs, is 8.30 in the morning. So an hour of listening before 9 a.m. very easily could be a, a, a half hour in the car from 8 to 8.30 getting to work, and then a, a half hour at work in a and maybe using a different kind of radio station or for a different use, a half hour between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. Well, she's gotten up, gotten dressed, done all the stuff, and gotten in her car now. What's happening there? I'm going to start out with moms and cars. And here's why. 68% of all female AC listeners are mothers. 61% of all female radio listening is done in the car. Moms spend about 20% more time in the car daily than, than other people, other women. And ultimately, mothers account for 72% of all quarter hours by AC's uh, female component. So moms dominate AC, and moms in cars are pretty significant. One of the things that moms do in their cars is chauffeur the kids around. So what impact does that have on their radio listening? Who chooses what to listen to? Does she even listen to radio with the kids in the car? And how often, if she does, do moms tune out to avoid the kids hearing bad language? Listening with her kids. 60% of AC female cum have kids at home with them. 88%, in other words, almost all, 9 out of 10 of those moms spend at least 30 minutes a day in the car with their kids, and they're almost always listening to the radio. 92% of them usually listen to the radio while the kids are in the car. So. Moms account for most of the AC uh, cum bodies. They spend, most of them, almost all of them, spend um, a, a time frame, 30 minutes, that is equal to or greater than the average amount of total daily radio usage. And they've got kids in the car. So what happens there? First of all, who picks which radio station to listen to? Well, the big answer is mom. She is still in control even when the kids are in the car. 33% of them said that we both like the same stations, and only 14% give the kids the choice of the radio station. So you see here, uh, mom's preference is involved in 86% of the, of the cars uh, where radio is chosen. Where there's any kind of discussion about it, it's what mom wants to listen to. So that's actually good for AC. Next question of course, is about morning shows and lyrics. Do you ever change stations to prevent your kids from hearing bad language or lyrics? 16% often, 43% sometimes. So basically, 6 out of 10 women who are uh, 25 to 54 and have kids uh, at least occasionally change station to get away from bad language or lyrics. So we've seen now that most women are moms. Most of the moms spend a half hour a day or more in the car with their kids, which is equal to at least half or more of her average radio listening. And six out of ten of them change stations to avoid lyrics. So and I think that boils down to, yes, it's an important consideration for AC. And there's a little bit of a format difference here. If you step outside of AC, it's interesting to notice that the format P1s who most often change stations are most likely to change stations are rhythmic top 40 fans. Makes sense. That's the format with the most graphic lyrical language. 
once you get within AC, there really aren't much many differences here, although there is maybe by a, a, a statistically insignificant hair mainstream AC, but that would make sense because those are likely to be the most conservative moms in the group. Now, what's going to happen in the car with her listening when the internet comes along? Is it going to is it going to destroy radio? Is it going to fragment radio? What's going to happen? First question is how fast is it going to spread? So we ask when you buy your next car, will internet capability, whether that's access or navigation in dash, etc., uh, will that affect your choice? And the answer breaks down into roughly equal thirds. A little more than a third say no or I I doubt it. Uh, a little less than a third say maybe and right at a third say, uh, yep, pretty likely or definite that my next car is going to be uh, internet uh, enabled. Okay. So in the near term, there's, there's going to be a, quite a bit of spread. And in the longer term, there'll be spread beyond that because uh, a lot of women who don't particularly care whether they have internet or not are going to get it as it becomes standard in models. So. I think this is the bottom line, though. This, this is the slide that I think best shows what's likely to happen, uh, let's say, when everybody gets internet in their cars. We asked the women who don't have internet access in car, which is, uh, as I recall, 88% of the sample, um, when you do get internet access in your car, what do you think you'll listen to most while you're in your car? And these blue bars are the answer to that. A little more than half said radio on a radio. The other answers are radio online. Uh, sorry, a local radio station online. A distant, in other words, an out-of-market station online. And a quarter of them thought that they would be listening primarily to customized music streams. Now, the other part of the sample, and it was somewhere in the neighborhood of a couple hundred and change women who do have internet access in their car. We ask them, what do you listen to most in your car? And these are the bars for those women. The main conclusion, you see that radio uh, is listened to a, a little bit more than women without thought they would. Uh, radio online a little less. Distant radio a little bit less. And custom music streams a lot less. So once again, there's a, there's a comparison of, of hype to reality. Um, digital anything is so attractive that people think they're going to overuse it. They think they're going to use it more than they will wind up using it once they get it. So we're going to have to put up with the hype. And this doesn't mean that we're totally free and clear and out of the woods. But in a car, people are going to continue to listen to radio when they get access. Now another thing, another consideration here is that as Verizon, AT&T, et cetera, uh, all those providers start moving away from unlimited data plans, being in your car is going to start costing you money. And when that happens, free over-the-air radio is going to look even better because we've seen in other research, including ours last year, women just aren't likely to pay money for music they can get for free on the radio or entertainment they can get for free on the radio. All right, so what happens at work once she gets there? Well, not all of her, not all of them go to work. Uh, four out of ten ACP ones are employed, so the majority are not. But we know, I think everybody pretty much shares this knowledge by now, that women who are employed are disproportionately heavy users because they listen at work. So, do you listen to music at work? Seven out of ten AC, hot AC, mainstream AC partisans do listen to music. At work. We haven't asked about radio yet. And there is a little bit of an age bias here with younger being higher, possibly because younger people are just a little bit more emotionally engaged with music. they got to have it. Of the women who said they don't listen to music at work, we wanted to know why in case there was something illuminating there. And the dominant answer is it's just inappropriate where I work for one reason or another, like my employer won't let me. And then Everything else below that is pretty small. I choose not to. It's too noisy here. Um, there's other reasons. I don't have a radio or a computer. And coworkers don't care for my kind of music. 
we'll see coworkers show up here again in a few minutes uh, in terms of what how, how important coworkers are in at work radio. All right, we've established that she listens to music. What's the source? How's radio doing? Well, radio's doing pretty good. It's the number one source still, 42%, and that's radio over the air. There's another 18% who listen to radio stations online streams, so a total of 60%. Okay, so the radio's 60%. Some other music stream, well back there at 14%, then iPods, Muzak, music from someone else's computer, or some other source. Well, perhaps you work at a company that has a live orchestra in the lobby. Who knows? What's usually the source of that music by age? Well, the older the person, the more likely she's going to be listening to radio over the air. The younger the person, the more likely she's going to be listening to radio online or a custom music stream. Starting to think about targeting people. Who listens and listens where? What kind of workplaces? You know, radio, uh, some years ago, stopped saying uh, in the office, and started saying at work and talking about workplaces. Um, when it comes down to it, though, the office is still the place where the most at work listeners are. More, more than half of at work listeners are in an office, followed by retail. And then everything else really drops off. Teaching, I, I work in a vehicle or a plant. Uh, I'm in medicine. I work outdoors and uh, I'm in the military. So that, that list there accounts for the great majority of all that we're listing, 83% of all of that. So office is the big one, retail is number two. We thought we'd flip these numbers around and look at them a, a different way. What percentage of people who work in each place listen to radio? Because that might help us get at an efficiency if we're, if we're trying to target at work listeners with direct marketing, for example. What are the most efficient places? Well, it looks like this. This is the percent of people who work in a given location and listen to music at work. Well, in a vehicle, huge. Outdoors, big. Retail, there's the office, still big, 70%. 67 in a factory, a nurse, teaching, military base. Which So factory or plant is 68%. I don't know that this is going to ultimately wind up being important, but it's interesting to see. Uh, I think the general general sense is that people who work in factories or plants don't listen to music at work. They really do. They really do. Now, so people who work in a vehicle would be the most efficient folks to get to if you could. But that was, let's see, what was, what was the answer before? Uh, vehicle was only about 6%. Um, Oops, ahead of myself. All right, outdoors, here's retail. What you want to do is to cross how many people are listening with how efficient a location is. And when you do that, still the dominant places become outdoor, uh, sorry, retail and office. Retail is a little more efficient than the office, but offices have more people listening at that point. So still, we may talk about workplace, but we're really talking about offices and secondarily retail. So how do women choose what to listen to at work? You know, if it's a radio station, what are the important things? Is it, is it music that everybody can agree on? For example, is it music your coworkers like or your boss likes or your customers like? Is it upbeat music or is it softer music? How much music, does that matter? Or is it entertaining personalities? Well, they, they gave us the answers here. Here they are. What's most important? Uh, answer, uh, most important measure by the percentage of women who said it was very, each item, uh, or a given item, sorry, was very important. So it's not entertaining or interesting personalities at the top of the list. Now, this doesn't mean that they're unimportant because being very important to a third, almost a third of women, fairly significant. Music the boss likes, not at the top either. Music my coworkers like is matters to a very small minority of women. Music that my customers like, about the same. Relaxing music, big jump here, upbeat music. And then a small jump to a lot of music without a lot of interruptions. 
So once again, just as it was in the car, what she likes is more important than what other people around her, customers, coworkers, boss likes. And as long as you're playing the kind of music she likes, she wants it to be upbeat, more than soft, and she wants it not to be interrupted. So you see there the relationship between personalities at the bottom and uh, a lot of music without interruption at the top. So that, uh, that hasn't really, really changed. Uh, the midday audience is a lot like it's been for a long time. A little bit of a difference by format. Uh, when you compare the, the appetite for upbeat music versus softer, relaxing music, upbeat dominates in top 40 in hot AC. Mainstream AC is the one place where there's a virtual tie between upbeat and relaxing. Makes total sense. One of the things that we did that's new this year is to look at the images of radio stations. That's something that's very commonly done in uh, a, for a given station or cluster's perceptual study but you never see that publicly, so we're, uh, we're going to show you some today. The question is, what are the winning, what are the images that drive successful stations in PPM? We looked at it among ACs QM, and what we did was we looked within each market, the AC QM to that market, and then what stations did, were named for each of the images that we offered. Thought it might be fun to not exactly drill down to one station, but to show you the winning images for a combination of specific hot ACs. In this case, KBIG in Los Angeles, TMX in Chicago, and KMPC, sorry, KMXP in Phoenix. And the number one image is a good blend of older and newer. Number two pretty well informs you which way that blend needs to lean. It's best current popular music, best current popular music. Followed by the morning show, which is uh, pretty significant here. Best to listen to at work, pretty high, but you're going to see it show up very differently from mainstream ACs. Uh, this is top of mind awareness because of events and advertising. Repetition, not a big deal. Best music for your taste. We didn't see much difference between hot and mainstream on this score. A lot of music without a lot of talk or commercials. Once again, you're going to see a difference when we move to mainstream AC, and too many talk, uh, too much talk or interruptions or commercials. Okay, so hot AC looks like it's dominated by the good blend of more recent music and a uh, entertaining morning show. With mainstream AC, we isolated uh, light in New York, WLTW, coast in Los Angeles, and WBEB in Philadelphia, and here's their cum images. Number one, best to listen to at work. So if that was an image of hot AC, it is the number one image with mainstream. There's good blend of older and newer. In hot AC, the next thing that showed up was currents. What is it for mainstream AC? No, uh, it's quantity of music, a lot of it. Best music for your taste, about equal uh, uh, to the 10 or so number that Hot AC got. Most entertaining morning show is way down the list. Uh, seeing it around town could be important, but it's not very high. Repetition, nothing. Various current popular music, there we go. So you see good blend of older and newer, and the relationship of that to best current popular, if you had any doubts, says that mainstream AC is not about current music. And then too many interruptions for talk or commercials, no. So a quick way to compare the two formats is to index them to each other. Um, here's good blend of older and newer. Uh, hot AC hot AC has about a 25% higher image on average for that. Best current popular music, though, it's almost four times mainstream. Most entertaining morning show, hot's uh, two to one over mainstream there. Here's where mainstream pulls ahead. Best to listen to at work. Hot's a little better at seeing a lot uh, see around town uh, and repetition, of course. Best music for your taste. You know, there's really, as I said, no difference there. A lot of music without talk or commercials, that belongs to mainstream. Too many interruptions, that's hot AC. So the, the big positive differences for hot AC are current recent music and an entertaining morning show, the big positives for mainstream are at work image and a lot of music. So, Well, we've talked about a lot of music. 
a, a lot of what kind of music. Again, this year, as we do each year, we've tested a number of music styles using montages who represent sounds or eras with music from that sound or that era or both. And we create two, three song montages for each sound. Half the audience hears one, half the audience hears the other. That combination helps smooth out any uh, unintended effects of accidentally choosing a clunker or a particularly phenomenal song among uh, if we just use one free song montage. So uh, women were not told the name of the montages or styles. They were not told the titles and artists. They just heard the music and the styles were the kind of pop that crosses over from top 40 to hot AC, the kind of pop that crosses all the way to mainstream AC, pop rhythm, which is a staple of top 40, 2000s pop gold, which conceivably any of these stations might be able to play, 90s gold, 80s pop rock, and 70s. Some of these are new this year. Uh, every year we, we continue to retest what was really strong from the previous year and then check something else uh, for curiosity. Here's what we see. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to show you a table of all those montages and their absolute favorite vote. And we're looking at them uh, with kind of a fine tooth comb here, not 10 year ages, but five year ages to see what it tells us. And there, there are the numbers, and that's a pretty dense slide that might be hard to read. So I'm going to help you out here. Focus on the, the styles and the ages where the montage gets a 20% or higher absolute favorite vote. Those are the yellow highlights. There are a few cells with uh, a light gray highlight. Those are almost almost 20%. Uh, then the next bunch is either is you know generally 14% or lower. So you see pop at the top. This is top 40 pop, top 40 hot AC pop. Um, looks good all the way up to 44, but at 45, it's it hits a just a brick wall. Soft pop is pretty good pretty much everywhere. It's a little weaker, 50 to 54, not a big deal. Pop rhythm looks like it's fine now, all the way up through 40 to 44, and then falls off the table at 45. 2000s pop gold, uh, not 20% not more than one place, but it's close to 20 all the way to 44. 90s gold, we're not going to spend much time on because it's just kind of all over the place here. 80s pop rock, almost hits 20 with 35 to 39s, really kicks in at 40 to 44. And down at the bottom, 70s are, are just nowhere until you reach 45 to 49 and 50 to 54. So if you think about that, just kind of defocus a little bit, pull back from your screen. There's a couple of clusters here. Top left is a bunch of yellow boxes. Bottom right is a cluster of yellow boxes. And there's not a big, big connection in between them. So that's kind of starting to tell us something, that there may be, there may be a fault line in AC that is now at 45 years of age. Um, you, you can really see it visually just really quickly looking at these graphs. You can see that, that some of them slope down kind of gently, and a couple of others either slope down or spike up pretty rapidly right at 45. So, so are there two audiences? Is there a 25 to 44 and then a 45 to 54 or just 45 plus audience? Well, we'll look at it that way, and I think it'll confirm it for you. Pop. Twice as, twice as big, 25 to 44. Soft pop. OK, both places. Pop rhythm, twice as big, 25 to 44. 90s pop gold, even that's a little bit higher, 25 to 44. 90s gold, yeah, who knows. 80s pop rock, pretty significant difference, 45 to 54. And then there's the giant gap on 70s. So there's your, there's your two audiences. One is pop, pop rhythm, and then doesn't care for 70s. You know, might be okay with some 80s. The other is a 70s and 80s and soft focused. So that presents a, uh, a question. Some some people who are in mainstream AC 
are going to try to span both of those audiences. And uh, that might be that, that might be doable. There are stations that are doing it. Other people are just going to decide that, well, there's AC now, which is 25 to 44, and then everything else is classic hits. We do show this pretty much for the slide deck if people want to download it. Here are the top styles by format, format subgenre. And you see there's a column for adult top 40 here. I mentioned earlier that there was a nine-year gap between the ages, the average ages of P1s to top 40 versus hot AC. So is there, is the, there might be mathematic room there. Is there, is there music room? Is something different when you look at those two combined? Does something pop? Does something emerge uh, or go away? Eh, the answer is pretty much you know. Um, you see that the top four styles for all four, uh, sorry, for uh, for mainstream and adult and hot AC are the same. The order is a little bit differently. But, the, but all four uh, styles show up as top four for adult top 40. So adult top 40 wouldn't be playing anything that mainstream or hot AC can't play. So there's, there's no there there. There might be just a slight difference in execution. If you, if you drill so far down into granularity on lifestyles and other behaviors, but musically, it, there's nothing there. Looking specifically at the P1 tastes of hot AC, these are what we call normalized scores. It's a it's a arithmetical function that kind of accounts for the difference from year to year in in average score of all music. So look at these as a hundred is a really good number, um, and near a hundred is a pretty good number. Soft pop over the last two years has has grown quite a bit. Fourteen points pop has done really well over the past two years. Pop rhythm's grown a little bit. And you see that 80s pop rock is really sliding down. It was, uh, it was, it was an absolute favorite of 20% uh, of more people, 22% more people two years ago. And 70s, of course, is just falling completely out of uh, being anywhere near the hot AC universe. For mainstream AC, it's a little bit different. 80s pop rock continues to look good. Soft pop has increased. That's the one way that AC taste, AC audience taste, have gotten a little bit more contemporary. The other is 70s. Even though even though this is where they're strong, 70s are really starting to fall uh, out of out of favor. Pop rhythm got a low score, it doesn't matter much that it's grown nine points in two years because 56 is really a low score. And top 40 pop sits down there with about the same appeal as it had, which is not real big. Continuing to look at music, we, we gave them two other statements to agree or disagree with. One being, discovering new music is important to me, and you see the answers by demos at the top line. The other is, when I'm listening to the radio, I often hear a song that is completely new to me. So one is, how important is new music? The other is, are you getting it from radio or not? And the bottom line is the difference between the two. And what that's telling us is that there's a, there's a surplus appetite for new music among 15 to 24s. Surprise, surprise. Uh, 25 to 34s are about on par. They're hearing it about as much as they care for. And 35 to 44, and especially 45 to 54, as you're telling us, uh, thanks but no thanks, I've heard quite enough music, quite enough new music for me. I'm going to move into contests just for, for only two quick slides, because contests are going to, I want, it's going to illustrate something interesting, I think, um, that people do forget from time to time, and because contests are going to become important in another way right at the very end of our presentation today. Have you ever entered or tried to win a contest on the radio in the past year? 26 or more, 26 to 30 percent of all of these women have. That's certainly not a majority, but you're going to see later they're pretty important people. And then, this is the point I wanted to illustrate, the appeal of prizes in radio station contests is not rational. What I mean by that is listeners don't make a dollar to dollar comparison or judgment. Uh, it's the prize. The interest in the prize is not always about how much the prize would cost in dollars. And here, here's an example: 
two of the prizes we presented in a, in a large list of prizes were 5000 in cash, which costs $5,000. And another one was a year's supply of gas. Now, the, we, this calculation was not presented to the audience. We didn't say a year's supply of gas, which cost about 2400 It was just a year's supply of gas. But if you calculate the cost, it's around $2,400, give or take, depending on your region and the month we're talking about. And for all the items on the, on the prize list, we said, how likely would you be to participate in the contest to try to win that prize? Here's the answer. It's identical. Women are just as likely to try to win a year's supply of gas as to win uh, cash money that they could buy two years' supply of gas with. And I think that just underscores the point that it can be very, very important. First, first of all, it's an emotional reaction rather than a logical reaction. And it, it underscores the, the importance of giving away concepts. Concepts meaning something that uh, she couldn't buy, even it, something that money couldn't buy, or something that could be bought, but she would never splurge so much as to, as to buy it for herself. Those are the things, or, or as in the case of gas, you're solving a problem for them. You're addressing something that's really bugging them. Those are the things that get those really strong emotional reactions. We'll start winding down here with a look at heavy women listeners, 25 to 54, the ones that listen to much more radio than average. And compared to the average, there are three things that show up. Personalities, you see the index on the right, compared to all 25, 54 women, uh, heavy listeners are 35% more likely to say that some of the people on the radio are entertaining, and 41% more likely to say that most of the people on the radio sound like cool folks. Another area of difference is in promotions. Heavy listeners are 31% more likely to like some radio station contests, and about the same amount, 28% more likely to have participated in the past year. Now the third difference is really more of a result than a cause. But heavy listeners listen in other locations. They're more likely to listen to music at work and a lot more likely to listen to music often at home and a lot less likely to say they listen only when they're in the car. So these are people to whom radio matters enough because something on the radio has, has really clicked for them. So once you can get them to take you out of the car into the workplace or the house, you're going to have yourself a heavy listener. Now our final set of numbers here, just for fun this time, since we have a presidential election coming up this fall, we asked all these women, who are you going to vote for this fall? We checked, we checked voter registration and intent to vote and all of that, wound up with who you're going to vote for. And here's the, here's the result. Is it President uh, Obama or President Romney? By P1's mainstream ACs, it's a, it's a very close horse race, 51 to 48. With hot AC, it's a very different story. It's a landslide for Obama among hot AC. And that's because there's some very strong age trends there. Here's, here's uh, President Obama. His appeal, his support peaks 25 to 34 and then declines with age. And Romney obviously is the exact opposite. It bottoms out 25 to 34 and increases with age. Now, since we we're doing a radio and media study, we stop talking to people once they turn 55 because in radio, of course, nobody over 55 matters. It's a different story in elections. You get to vote if you're 55 all the way through uh, the end of your life. That's why it's going to be. A, it looks like it's going to be a really close election this fall because uh, the young support is going to go to Obama. The older support is headed toward Mitt Romney, or at least it was in May. We know that these things change um, on a weekly and sometimes daily basis, but this is this this is the starting point back in May. So Obama for hot AC, horse race for mainstream AC. Just quickly summarizing some key points. Uh, most of the differences we see are age rather than format related, so you may want to focus more on the audience than the format. More than twice as many AC listeners wake up to their cell phone than a radio alarm. After 
upbeat music and humor, weather and motivate or inspire me are the top things women want first thing in the morning. Texting is an okay way to reach some women in the morning, but Facebook is twice as many and email reaches four times as many. 70% of morning quarter hours come from women who listen an hour or more by 9 o'clock. At work, her music preferences generally matter much more than those of her customers or her coworkers. So music everybody can agree on, not so much. The number one thing women want from radio at work is a lot of the music she likes. Two, diff two things are important, music she likes and a lot of it. There is a fault line at about 45 musically. 80s pop rock is rapidly falling out of hot AC. And heavy listeners who listen to AC differ in three notable ways. They're more likely to use radio in multiple locations, they're more attached to personalities, and they're more likely to participate in radio contests. And there's a slide, everyone, <laughs> uh, to, to say happy surprise. birthday to Alan. Uh, Alan's birthday is tomorrow, so happy birthday to Alan. And uh, thank you again, everyone, for uh, hanging with us uh, uh, for the last presentation. We want to save some time and take some questions. Um, first of all, again, remember that this slide deck will be available on our website, burnsradio.com, and it will be available starting tomorrow morning. As always, if you think of any other questions or want to address anything specifically with us, uh, feel free to email us, alan at burnsradio.com or Jeff at BurnsRadio.com. And uh, Alan, while I uh, start going through some of these questions, let me just uh, throw a quick one. You were, uh, one of the last slides you showed was the uh, presidential uh, choices there. And uh, did you see any regional differences in choice for president? I don't remember looking at that. Do you, do you, do you no, we, we, no, we we didn't spend as much time analyzing the presidential vote as, as um, the other issues because it was a sort of a secondary or tertiary issue for us just for fun, but we can certainly go back and do that. Okay. And, and uh, by the way, if, if, if there is a question that we aren't able to or don't get to answer um, this afternoon on the webinar, absolutely you're encouraged to email jeff at burnsradio.com or alan at burnsradio.com and we'll be happy to answer your question. Go ahead, Jeff. Another one in terms of the music preferences uh, question, uh, you know, it does it is there a position or a strategy where you can span both audiences, meaning hot AC and mainstream, and you know I think we've all heard that referred to maybe as bright AC, where it is a hybrid of the two. Uh, does does this research indicate that there is a position there? Does it indicate there's a position there? Um, no. No, it doesn't. Uh, now, you may be able to make a position. You may be able to create a radio station that does create a coalition of the under 45 and over 45. Uh, it's going to be a, a question, though, of whether your market's going to allow you to do that. And that, of course, depends on what kind of competition you've got from other ACs and classic hit stations. Yeah, I think uh, uh, a more important way as opposed to hybrids of the format is really as we talked about that fault line at the age of what looks to be now 45 years. There are some distinct differences in music preferences um, for those that are younger than 45 and then conversely those that, that are above. Yep. And someone asked if we could put the summary slide up once again so I just put it back up here while we're talking and answering some of the other questions. Uh, let's see, what percentage of total radio listeners are women 25 to 54, and what percentage of women radio listeners listen to talk radio? Well, neither of those are questions that we can directly address from this data, because since we talked only to women 25 to 54, we can't, we can't tell you what proportion of women plus men they are in terms of their listening. That's, a, that's, that's available from at least two places. One is, is looking at PPM markets individually, but also uh, Jeff mentioned uh, about an hour ago that we're going to do a study, a very large national study with Triton Digital and present the results at 
the NAB radio, NAB RAB radio show this fall. And that will be in all formats, all ages, both genders study that can uh, help answer some of those questions. Alan, another question was uh, in terms of workplace listening, we saw retail, uh, you know, kind of dominate uh, workplace. And the question was, uh, since this was in PPM markets, uh, do you think uh, PPM device kind of uh, dictates that because it's really what's being played as well as what's being listened to? And again, you know, these were PPM markets, but this was a questionnaire where people were asked what they thought they were listening to. So it wasn't what PPM devices were, were picked up. This is perception. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, very good. Someone else asked um, about the images section. Were these images the stations used, or, or are these the way the respondents think of the station? Uh, and it's definitely the latter. Uh, this this wasn't measuring what stations say. It might be measuring, to some extent, the result of what they say. But this is clearly the way people think of stations. What they what they were asked to do in each market, each respondent was given a list of stations in her market, and the statements along the lines of the station that has the best, I'm sorry, the most entertaining morning show is, and we ask her to fill in the answer. So it's you know it may or may not be what the stations claim, but it it is the result in terms of what the audience. Thanks. We had uh, a couple of people who asked about 90s music. Uh, one person said, uh, you seemed flummoxed when mentioning the 90s music research. And yeah, I think, uh, I, I think that's a fair statement. Um, there was no clear trend for 90s. But if you recall, there was, it was higher on the youngest end and higher on the oldest end. And that's a pattern that we very often see, um, regardless of what age group you're talking to or what format, um, for, for that age group, the newest music does real well, as in the contemporary, today's music does real well. And the oldest music, or, or sorry, music that's old enough for that age group also does well. So one is your current favorites, the other is, is your favorites from the past. But the music right in the middle usually tests the worst. For that group, it's neither new enough nor old enough to be nostalgic, and so it's not very passionate. That might have been what's going on with 90s there. Or, as my assistant Molly just whispered here, it could have been that the music in the 90s just was crap. That's all. <laughs> Let's see, if lyrics and songs are still a big concern with moms with kids in the car, it'd be interesting to know exactly what may actually be acceptable to today's moms that may not have been 10 years ago. For example, language words that are not now considered as bad as they used to be. This is a tough thing for a programmer to discern. Jennifer, you're absolutely right, and it's probably even tougher to research something like that in a study like this. Because, well, especially uh, on a national basis as yeah, well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you know, you're, you're actually going to have people walk away from the survey if you give them a list of uh, words that could range anywhere from slightly naughty to really offensive and ask them to read them and respond to them. The, the best way to figure out where that line would be probably is in focus groups or one-on-one -on -one interviews where you can, you can talk to people face-to-face -face and sort of get their reactions hear their words rather than say, okay, look at this word. Is that, a, is that an okay word or not? Well, we're way over time here. It's about 15 minutes past, uh, past the 60 that we uh, told most people we thought we would be in. Um, Jeff, you have any more, any more questions? Uh, you know, I think any other questions we, can, we will uh, follow up and answer uh, via email because we do have your email address. And again, don't hesitate to uh, reach out to us. And uh, I think at this point, uh, thank you all again for your, uh, for your time and attention. Uh, we've thoroughly enjoyed uh, presenting this information and hopefully uh, we, you could walk away with some action items for, for your radio station. So thank you again, everyone. Uh, Thanks again, it. folks. 
don't forget that you can get the slide decks uh, and links to the webinars on YouTube from burnsradio.com. And if you think of other questions after we sign off here, absolutely feel free to email us. Thanks again.